Howdy folks, today I want to talk about the Motu Ultralight Mark V. So I've got a little mm, small studio set up that I've had for years and uh, the last interface I actually bought was a EMU uh, 1212M back in like 2006 or something like that. It was a long time ago. I've been uh, just using it as basically like two tracks or sometimes four ins. Um, so I wanted something that was a lot, lot better than that and had a lot more flexibility routing and really could be the centerpiece for my entire audio, uh, life. And so, um, I looked around on the internet, turns out these are sold out forever, Tch, figures, friggin' shortages. Um, but I was able to find an open box unit for 600 bucks and got it. And probably the last one, like I said, so uh, there'll probably be stock of this. I'm thinking I actually asked Sweetwater at the end of the year, like November, December. So if this interests you and you're that type of person, then uh, maybe get your name in there and try and get a pre-order or something like that. Having said all that, uh, this thing is absolutely phenomenal. It's amazing. Um, I'll just go over a few things. Uh, it's a USB-C interface. That's how you connect to a computer. PC or uh, I think Android might work as well. I also know that it works on Linux because uh, I uh, read some people were using it. Um, so this thing has a ton of inputs and outputs. It's got about, I want to say maybe 18, uh, no, 22 outputs and like 18 inputs. Some of, the, some of those are ADATs, but uh, as far as physical outputs, I want to say there's 12 line outs. And uh, as far as inputs, there's obviously two XLR mic preamps on the front and then about I think eight on the eight line ins on the back, uh, all balanced. And uh, you got, you know, your 48 volts for your mic inputs and padding and uh, like 70 some plus dB of gain on the mic input inputs. Um, this thing was measured by Julian Krauss, fellow on YouTube, uh, who actually runs devices through a measuring uh, suite. And uh, this thing measures extremely well. Um, so I think he measured it at maybe might have this wrong, but I think maybe like 112 dB uh, signal noise ratio, <clears throat> like worst case scenario, possibly a little higher, but perfectly fine for normal situations. Um, mic inputs are similarly excellent signal, signal to noise. Uh, what else can we say about this? Oh, also, um, one of the things that a lot of devices, uh, well, like interfaces can't get right is a low impedance headphone out. Like seriously, like, I, there's only like a handful. If you, uh, like I said, Julian Krauss on YouTube, go and look it up. He will show you uh, measuring the uh, output impedance of a bunch of interfaces. There's only a couple that actually work for anything low like IEMs in your monitors. And this is one of them. The uh, impedance is like 0.1, I want to say 4 uh, ohm output impedance. So it should be fine for any damn thing you could ever plug in. Um, also, things to know, it is actually very heavy. So you can push things in and out of it without it sliding all over the friggin' place. I got a little bursin hanging out on top there. Um, and so what I got is uh, the bursin is running via SPDIF optical from the uh, Ultralight Mark V uh, on the back. That's just in line. Uh, you can see, obviously, this got like a nice little OLED display up here. Um, if I put on something, I'll put it on real low. So what I've actually got, you can use this thing as a... Here, let me turn it down just a little more. Hold on. <laughs> Don't want to smash people out. Okay, so you can use this thing as a live sound routing interface or mixing board. Um, so over here, we got the two line outs, uh, one and two, right here, main. Then we got, uh, what is that, eight uh, line outs here. Um, so the way I'm running this is uh, left, right, um, two sets of studio, or two studio monitors on the left and right, which I think are JBLs. Then the uh, three and fours are, K, uh, sorry, Yamaha. Uh, then uh, four and five are like uh, KRKs. Then I got a set of outputs going to my subwoofer SVS. And then the last two are going to this, the X-Duo TA20 balance. So balance from this guy to this guy. All of that is running in line and you can fade and mix any combination of inputs and outputs you'd ever want to your heart's content. Um, so I'll show you a little bit of that. Um, let's see, let me turn this off. 
So if we go to QMix, this is the interface that you will get on your computer. Uh, so we can see immediately that, let me just pop over to this. Um, we got some stuff labeled. Uh, this is a Blue Yeti Pro mic on the, actually turns out left and right right now. I also have an SM57, but the Yeti Pro is a stereo uh, device. So I just figured I'll use that. Um, we got our main volume. That's our left, right outs uh, phones. So the, the headphone jack has actually got its own volume. You can link any of these, or, sorry, this is input monitoring. So, you know, um, all your inputs. And also you can route those to your headphones if you just want instant uh, monitoring. Um, so let's flip over to devices. Um, we got, um, and this is an interesting thing. You can actually uh, turn this sound card into many Windows devices. Uh, so, so sound devices. So I think you could do like main out is one, uh, phones is two, three, four. Um, oh, and I think I need to do something here. Anyway, I, I have that disabled, but uh, so you can, that literally just added another uh, output device to Windows. And you can do that for a bunch of different stuff. So if you wanted, you could, in theory, have a bunch of different um, uh, programs all on different lines, different outputs on the device. It's pretty incredible. Um, and also for the line ins and the mic ins. Uh, so here's our inputs. Uh, you got like some padding you can control. Like if I hit, uh, well, I'm not going to do it right now. If I turn the 48 volt off on my mic, it'll turn off. You got a pad, blah, blah, blah. Um, I also got a Kemper profiler. That's for guitar. Uh, it needs to be at nine. Um, so that is plugged into two of the inputs on the back. Um, and then I, I don't think I have anything else on these right now. Uh, if we go to the outputs, we got our phones, more stuff. You can uh, gain volumes. So as you turn the main volume on it, like so, I don't know if you can see that turning, but uh, that will turn all of the lines all in a series, either up or down, depending on your main uh, volume control. Uh, phones, uh, you can turn, you know, source, you can change that to whatever you like. Um, oh, interesting. It's not showing certain things on the screen. Well, anyway, um, we'll go to our mixers. So I have that labeled. So that's the front Yamaha's. Um, here's all our inputs. You can fade those in. I got uh, LDAC that's coming via SPDIF. We got a workstation that's coming via uh, coax SPDIF. Um, that's another computer. Here's our Windows sound cards here. And then we've got um, like a main uh, fader here. And then you got that for all your outputs. So we have uh, IEMs. Uh, well, <laughs> that's my headphones. Um, also, LDAC, by the way, is running off of a uh, optical or it's one of the uh, digital inputs. So I got like a little LDAC uh, Bluetooth receiver just in case I want to pop that into my signal chain. Uh, we got um, front JBLs are there. Rear KRKs are there. Um, we got the uh, tube amp there. We got the subwoofer here. And I have a reverb. I think you can add that on certain things for like live sound. I haven't really messed with that at all. So that's just kind of the interface. Really cool. And then if I pop over to, uh, here's just the uh, little, you know, the product page. And, you know, I bought this. I'm not like, this is not like, I'm not even being paid to review this. This is my new device, my new interface for all of my audio stuff. And uh, I bought it based on my research and that's it. Basically, so, you know, 2.4 millisecond round trip, blah, blah, blah. Um, killer, uh, 40, <laughs> yeah, tons, okay, 18, 22. Um, it's got ADATs. You could do, it's kind of like a little flow chart of things you can plug in. Very cool. Even a home theater. Uh, oh, yeah, you can actually control the whole damn thing from an iPad, which I don't use Apple stuff. And um, yeah, so this thing is a freaking beast, an absolute beast. I can't recommend it more. I've had it running for about two weeks now, not a single glitch, no no problems. Um, I'll we'll say that uh, USB-C cables break all the time, and I had a couple cutouts. It turns out, yeah, I just tapped the cable and the damn thing cut out. New cable, good to go. Um, so just something. Um, and uh, yeah, really cool. So I wanted to mention that for people that are in the... Uh, maybe, I don't know, streaming type of stuff. Uh, who knows what you might be into, but need a lot of inputs and outputs, microphones, um, and a very, very solid uh, audio device uh, for a PC or Mac that you could use for literally anything. Uh, headphones, IEMs, recording, 
the whole works. Um, you know, even the Burson is in line with this. So absolutely amazing. Right on, folks. I will talk to you on the next one.